So the Fed came out and raised rates by 25 basis points. And everybody's talking about how great this is and uh, there's maybe a reversal. But in all honesty, this is not the real story. This is just a temporary little footnote. And it's not like going to make a big difference in the grand scheme of things. And what I'm talking about is, of course, we just saw that uh, Jerome Powell came out and uh, the Fed, Fed rate said, yeah, we're going to raise it by 25 basis points. And uh, the market responded in the crypto digital asset space as we saw <laughs> a drop. 0.7% uh, because the whole narrative lately has been, you know, as the Fed keeps screwing up and making these mistakes, it actually makes everything stronger for crypto digital asset spaces. People start to see that banks are collapsing and maybe they can get into an alternate investments and maybe there's little things that uh, can shore up all the mis misgivings that is happening in traditional finance. So when we see this, it just reminds me of the goldfish mentality or the memory that people actually have. And the S&P 500 rallied and NASDAQ rallied, and that's just fantastic. But again, for the crypto space, these 25 basis points or these Fed rate hikes are just a blip. I could really care less. We have to take a look at the big story. And the big story, like I've been talking about forever, is regulation and what's going on behind the scenes as is a, is a distraction. Now, we talked about yesterday, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, uh, governor of Florida, came out and said, look, we don't want CBDCs. This is why they're awful. And it was just a breath of fresh air and just a sigh of relief for me. I think a lot of people who've been warning about CBDCs, now we don't have to say, hey, it's not just some, some crazy half-brain idea we had. Here we have the governor of Florida saying just how dangerous that actually is. Now, on top of that, we also had Ted Cruz senator from my great state of Texas come out and go, you know what? We need to block CBDC. So again, what I'm talking about here, and we'll get into this uh, uh, real quick, is it's all about regulation. It's between this, a new law put out by uh, Texas, on top of the economic report by the president from the White House. And we're going to see how people will talk about how awful this is. And in actuality, I didn't think it was that bad. And I'll tell you why. So to get into this part right here, Ted Cruz, puts out a new bill to block central bank digital currencies. More important ever to stop this happening. So here's what's happening. Cruz introduced the bill to block the United States Federal Reserve from launching a direct-to-consumer CBDCs. In a March 21st statement, Cruz said he introduced the bill to prevent the Fed from developing CBDC, which could be used as a financial surveillance tool by the federal government. Again, we talked about this yesterday about shaping the narrative. That is exactly what Ron DeSantis was talking about. And I got to tell you, they are spot on. CBDCs that fail to adhere to these three basic principles could enable an entity like the Federal Reserve to mobilize itself into a retail bank, collecting personally identifiable information on users and track their transactions indefinitely. Cruz County, the federal government has no authority to establish CBDCs. We should be empowering entrepreneurs, enabling innovation, and increasing individual freedom, not stifling. And that's the exact same thing that Ron DeSantis talked about. That's why I put out a tweet which said uh, DeSantis and Cruz 2024. Now, I'm not a very political person. This isn't a political channel. I, I said it as a joke. And of course, everybody you know, either loved it or absolutely hated it. And that's how polarizing politics are in America. So I uh, will not be saying that again. And then also... Texas legislature introduced the bill to attract Bitcoin businesses, protect the interests of the same. And this is how you do things. If you want job creation, if you want people to come to where you're at, you want to make things friendly. <clears throat> and you can see this in Dubai. You can see this in El Salvador. You can see this in parts of the EU. This is what you do to grow innovation, not stifle it. The bill will provide legal protection from those owning and engaging in Bitcoin-related activities, including immunity afforded by censorship resistant Bitcoin, spending and the ability to store Bitcoin in an unhosted wallet without state interference. Bitcoin miners will be free to engage in mining without restrictions from any law or resolution. Texas will support individuals who code or develop on the Bitcoin network under Section 8, which protects freedom of speech and the press. And this would also, unfortunately, would have helped uh, the developer of Tornado Cash. Was he sitting in jail waiting for trial as somebody like Sam Bakeman fried just goes free just because he wrote some code. The bill side of the China's government's banning of Bitcoin mining and trading in 2021 has led to the quick migration of miners from China to the U.S., particularly to Texas. I didn't know this, but 14% of the total hash rate in the, for the entire hash rate for Bitcoin is done in Texas. 
DeSantis uh, talked about a bill, and this is what we talked about before. So again, I truly think it's all going to come down to regulation and the bills that are passed to see if we survive in the United States. But as we get into the stories a little bit later, uh, you're going to see that, in all honesty, America, and uh, before we go on, I'm a big homer. I love America. But we're going to see how it really doesn't matter about America as far as crypto and going global. So this is also what it comes down to. And this was an economic report from the White House. And a lot of people are talking about this today, or some people are talking about this today, which I thought they were should talk about more about this than the 25 basis points. I could honestly, I don't think it was that big of a deal today. If it would have gone to 50 basis points, we would have been talking, but 25 is just par for the course. But this report was put out by the White House, and it was pretty damning. And this is uh, Matt Homer, former deputy superintendent with the New York Department of Financial Services. He said the report was a damning indictment of the space that makes the administration's policy crystal clear, which they are not too fond of crypto, let's be honest. The amount of attention given to digital assets is substantial, especially when viewed in comparison to other areas of financial services that have arguably been far more detrimental, detrimental over the past few weeks, namely banks and the Federal Reserve as they raise rate hikes. And it's caused a lot of different issues with the collapsing and different problems for the retail, just the right to the consumer. And the report itself, it's pretty long. It's about, uh, I don't know, 100 and, or excuse me, 513 pages. You want to just scroll down to chapter eight, link in the description. You can read the whole thing, but we've only got, you know, three hours. Uh, so let's just uh, skip ahead. So yes, there was a lot of parts that were damning and a lot of things that were said that were quite negative. However, let's take a look at the good side. And this is from Rebecca Redding. And she is the chief policy officer at Polygon Labs. And she thinks like me. She's like, look, I'm not going to give you hopium, but I'm going to show you some of the things that would look quite positive. And she said, you know, just take a look at chapter eight, focus on digital assets, some key takeaways. The report states multiple times, let me say this again, multiple times, that crypto assets appear to be here to stay. This is the critical acknowledgement. It means the industry can continue to innovate, to build the ecosystem robustly and safely. It's not just about survival anymore. And that's a big thing to think about. When I got in 2017, no one thought that, I mean, a lot of us thought that uh, the government would step in and they would stifle innovation, which they did, but they thought that we could get away with just suffocating everything and just eliminating Bitcoin and moving on. But that didn't happen. And I like how Rebecca says that in this document, it says, look, it's here to stay. We have to deal with it. And however we do that, whether through regulation or choke point 2.0 or how we get to it, we need to do it in some way. I don't think these things will work in the long run, especially as we get into the other articles where we talk and we see that just how everything's moving away from the United States, which is fine. I think uh, there's a lot of room to run. And she states, and with crypto here to stay, it's more important than ever to ensure that industry and policymakers engage collaboratively to create sound rules of the road for blockchain-enabled tech. The report also acknowledges that the tech underlying crypto may still find productive uses. And... Um, it goes on and talk about Polygon. Of course, she's uh, with Polygon, so she's going to talk about it. But finally, the report focuses almost exclusively on crypto as a replacement for fiat currency. That's what's known as a straw man argument, where you set it up just to knock it down pretty easily. Look, for it to replace fiat, crypto could very well. But that's why I liked, we talked about Governor Ron DeSantis. We talked about Senator Ted Cruz. As they come out and said, look, CBDCs are not okay. They're really bad. They are going to lead to surveillance. They're going to lead to shutting off things. And we're not going to allow those in our states, Florida and Texas. That is the big hurdle to get past. Now, me personally, can crypto take over for fiat totally? Sure, why not? But I got to be honest with you, just between us. If I want to do something illegal, I am not going to use crypto because it is on the blockchain and visible for anyone. Why would I use Bitcoin or Ethereum or Cardano or anything like that to do anything illegal because it's just right there for me. I got to tell you, between us, not that I have done this before, but if I didn't want the IRS to know of certain things, you know, you know what I'm going to use? Cash, fiat. You know how hard it is to track fiat cash when you're paying for everything back and forth? It's on you. I'm not saying that I've done this before. I'm just saying it's a heck of a lot easier to do whatever you want in fiat 
than in a trackable currency that is on a blockchain, which is visible to everyone. So I would just put that out there. Let me know your thoughts of that in the comment section. And then also speaking of Polygon, I gotta tell you, this they're really crushing it. South Korean gaming giant Nexon to use Polygon for popular Maple Store universe. Again, as we take a look at in America and we have our problems, it'll just deflate and go someplace else and it'll just be as strong. So a dedicated Polygon Supernet allows Nexon to customize a blockchain to meet the complex requirements of online gaming. And this is for MapleStory, which I am, I am not a big gamer. I don't know what this is. Uh, but it does have 108, geez, at least 180 million registered users. It's been one of Nexon's most successful games. I got to tell you, that's true. So go to where the people are. If they're not in America, they're all over the world. Users can buy or sell items from one another with the current version of MapleStory's currency. However, the Polygon Supernet will allow players to be able to earn and collect NFT items through gameplay to unlock various benefits or utility across the ecosystem. Look, if you're looking for a use case, that's a big one. And I don't like using the word NFT, just use them like digital collectibles or Web3 skins or whatever else. And then just to accentuate this, this point, uh, as far as Polygon goes, and it says here, Nexon, Korea's largest game developer, launching on Polygon. They join other AAA developers like Squaronix in choosing to build on Polygon. From Starbucks to Nike to Nexon, don't forget about Disney. The world is building on Polygon. When are you? And then just to really talk about this, this is Dimitri. He says, you know, look, Maple Stories reached 180 million registered users, and it's grossed over $3 billion in lifetime revenue. How great is that if you just got tagged to help out with that business? So congratulations for Polygon. Not to be outdone, Sony files a patent for NFTs to allow transfers between games and consoles. So again, if we're looking for a use case, there it is. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I think you get the drift. And then also, lastly, again, America keeps screwing up. So what are they going to do? They're going to lose companies or they're just going to expand. Coinbase expands in Brazil and uh, allows crypto purchases with Brazilian real. I didn't know they were moving this fast, but here we are. So Coinbase integrated the Brazilian government's payment system PIX and started allowing crypto purchases with Brazilian reals. That's happening right now. Actually, it happened yesterday. The company said Tuesday. The tie-in with PIX, which is more than 140 million, geez, 140 million users, was enabled through a partnership with eBanks, a Brazilian end-to-end -end payment processor, in addition to making local currency purchases. Customers will be able to withdraw Brazilian reals. Coinbase said its app is fully available in Portuguese and has enabled 24-hour support. Man, I wish they would do that for America. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe they have more support here. In 2021, Coinbase opened a technology hub in Brazil where it hired more than 40 full-time engineers and eventually a country director. Talk about the long game. That was, in 20, that was two years ago open a technology hub, and now they're talking about expanding out, and that's why they're probably going to be pretty big. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section, and then uh, hopium story for the day. Sorry, I never really I never really think this is going to happen because I've heard about this story so many times, just like a Bitcoin ETF. But XRP token surges on positive outlook and Ripple versus SEC case. Did it really pump that much? XRP, no, it hasn't. XRP in the last 24 hours is down 7%. Well, I guess everybody already figured it out. So if you're new to the game, just know this, that uh, there's going to be rumors all over the place. And there's this rumor that, uh, and Jeremy Hogan, which I do like that guy, Ripple filed a Voyager bankruptcy judge's decision. Judge uses abnormally strong language saying that the U.S. regulators themselves cannot even agree on what criteria to use in deciding whether crypto is a security. This is for the Voyager one. Um, you're going to hear a lot of different uh, thought process and rumors that uh, Ripple's won and it's going to be announced any day now and uh, just wait and XRP is going to 589. I do not prescribe to that narrative, but uh, that's what it is. So just something, a little hopium to keep you going, but uh, don't hold your breath. And uh, that's it for today. Lastly, to announce before we take off uh, tomorrow, not financial advice, live will be on uh, Guy's channel over at Coin Bureau Clips. It'll be me, Guy, and Ben from Into the Cryptoverse. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a good one. Good questions. I'll let you all know what that is. And then lastly, lastly, uh, this is our last week here in Puerto Rico. We have to go back to Texas, take care of business and see family. So we're going to be doing a meetup 
at uh, San Juan Smokehouse from 4 to 7 p.m. Tomorrow night, if you're in the area, please stop by. I'll buy your first round of beers. And that's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, consider subscribing. Everything talk about are extremely time sensitive as you just found out. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for being here and I'll see you on the next one.